Let's return to the pinhole image of the flower and vase of the previous lesson. Recall that the pinhole prevents the overlapping of rays of light reflecting from the flower and vase. With no overlap, an image is formed. Yum physics! Long exposure times were required because of the small amount of light admitted by the pinhole. A somewhat larger hole would admit more light, but overlapping rays would produce a blurry image. Too large a hole would allow too much overlapping and no image would be discernible. That's where a lens comes in. The lens converges light onto the screen without the unwanted overlapping of rays. Whereas the first pinhole cameras were useful only for still objects because of the long exposure time required, moving objects could be photographed with the lens camera because of the short exposure time which is why photographs taken with lens cameras came to be called snapshots. Now let's see how refraction occurs in lenses. Let's look at a lens as if it were a set of several matched prisms and blocks of glass arranged in the order shown. Prisms refract incoming parallel rays so they converge to a point. We call this type of lens a converging lens. Note that it is thicker in the middle and thinner at the edges. Here's a different arrangement. The middle is thinner than the edges and it diverges the light. Such a lens is called a diverging lens. Note that the prisms diverge the incident rays in a way that makes them appear to come from a single point in front of the lens. In both converging and diverging lenses, the greatest deviation of rays occurs at the outermost prisms because the angle between the two refracting surfaces is greatest there. No deviation occurs exactly in the middle, for in that region the glass faces are parallel to each other, like light passing through window pane. Real lenses are not made of prisms and are made of solid pieces of glass with surfaces that are often ground to a spherical shape. We see here how smooth lenses refract waves. Sample wavefronts are shown in red. Here are some key features of a converging lens. The principal axis of a lens is the line joining the centers of curvatures of its surfaces. The focal point is the point to which a beam of parallel light, parallel to the principal axis, converges. I show the focal points with purple dots. Incident parallel beams that are not parallel to the principal axis focus at points above or below the focal point. All such possible points make up a focal plane, not shown here. Because a lens has two surfaces, it has two focal points and two focal planes. When the lens of a camera is set for distant objects, the photosensitive surface is very near in the focal plane behind the lens and the camera. The focal length of the lens is the distance between the center of the lens and either focal point. Here's a view that shows an object and its image when the object is beyond the focal point of the lens. I show the focal point with the purple dots. We see that the image is upside down. And another view of the same. I place a purple dot where the far focal point is located. Light from the candle flame that travels parallel to the principal axis after refracting through the lens passes through this focal point. Here's the near focal point. Light from the flame that passes through the near focal point after refracting through the lens travels parallel to the principal axis. Where they meet, the image of the flame is formed. And there's no net refraction of light that passes through the center of the lens. Not surprisingly, it contributes to the image of the flame. Yum physics. The simplest use of a converging lens is a magnifying glass. Sydney uses a magnifying glass to examine the structure of a leaf. The leaf is inside the focal length of the magnifying glass so she sees an enlarged upright image. She views the leaf through a wider angle when she views it with a magnifying glass. To understand how it works, think about how you examine objects near and far. With unaided vision, a far away object is seen through a relatively narrow angle of view and a close object is seen through a wider angle of view. So to magnify something, you need to increase the angle through which you view it.
To see the details of a small object like this flower, get close for a wide-angle view. If you find that your eye can't focus when too close, a converging lens provides an enlarged right-side-up image only when the object is inside the focal point, as we see here. If a screen is placed at the image distance, no image appears because no light is directed to the image position. The rays that reach your eye, however, behave as if they came from the image position. We call the result a virtual image. Here the eye sees an enlarged flower, nicely magnified. And, as said before, when the object is beyond the focal point of a converging lens, a real image is formed instead of a virtual image. The real image of the candle is upside down. Real images with a single lens are always upside down. A diverging lens, on the other hand, used alone, produces a reduced virtual image. It makes no difference how far or how near the object is. When a diverging lens is used alone, the image is always virtual, right side up, and smaller than the object. A diverging lens is often used as a finder on a camera. This diverging lens shows a virtual image of Jamie and his cat, right side up and greatly reduced. Cameras with viewfinders are not very popular these days. Little Emily Ackerman looks through prism lenses at the Exploratorium, which deflect light to the side. And here's the lenses you encounter when being fitted for eyeglasses. Learning about lenses is a hands-on activity, not suited to this screencast. Not fiddling with lenses while learning about them is like taking swimming lessons away from water. So I'll not say more about lenses here. But I want to leave you with a question. A question that I hope you can try with a camera, telescope, or binoculars. If you cover half the lens to allow only half as much light entering it, what effect does this have on the image? Does it cut the image in half, or what? Until next time, good energy. Mm -hmm.